Okay, just about to kick off with Pleasant Hill, and I noticed a couple of other little issues here. One is, there's no game turn marker. Not a big deal, obviously, but kind of a... Jeez, I can't even provide that. I'll, but, you know, you can uh, substitute whatever you like. I think that's better than a die for now. The other is, I forgot during setup, this guy's off on his own here. Now, that's very odd. I don't know if that's a mistake. Uh, that's the, I've checked it several times. That's the hex he's in now. This is not a circumstance I'm used to. Yeah, some article mixed in with the, uh, rules here. I'm using these rules, but I probably shouldn't, probably should use a set that I can actually read. Let's grab the P Ridge ones, because they're, Actually, still bound. Um, leader casualty. Whenever a leader stacked, so he, if this is correct, he can be captured very easily. I'm assuming that that's probably a mistake, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about it. It. I feel like it's the kind of thing that should have been called out in the rules. Hey, he's here. I'm going to just leave him there, and if the Confederates walk into his hex, well, gosh, I guess he was out taking a piss or something. Anyway, there you go. Well, things open up, we're done with the first turn, actually. Confederates go first in this one. I have to look to find that. That's specified in the rules, um, in the in the exclusive rules in each game, but it's usually kind of hidden somewhere, and it was here. Uh, they marched as fast as they could. They couldn't get to the guy taking the leak, but, you know, he's not aware of them. He's only aware... He's close enough, but he doesn't have anybody on the line of sight. So, I think he's doomed there, unless somehow he gets activated uh, automatically. And the activation rules don't look like they do it. Uh... Maybe brigade release table will allow it. That's 30.5. Uh, that's the activation table. If the brigade commander has an activation, we change lower. Confederate activation. Slow to react. The following brigades are treated as if they're in reserve. See one of them? That's Benedict. These are required for full brigade release or something starting in turns three four and five that's not going to be right now so um it looks to me like we're not going to be he's going to get captured and there's nothing you can really do about it unless the confederates do something silly like you know walk into his line of sight while he's not there but whatever um the only thing you do see Confederate guns got to fire, and they took out a gun here. No exploding caissons, no or casings, uh, no uh, no route there. The Union couldn't fire back. In fact, defensive fire would have happened first. They're surprised. These guns came out of the woods and fired on them without them paying any attention. From now on, they can, I think, react. The restrictions to reserve are what? cannot move or change formation, but it can fire and change facing. So they would be able to defend themselves. They just don't have the ability to fall back or anything like that. All right, well, we move into the second turn, and the Confederates get to go again. Now, at this point, I think they get some other units activated, basically almost their entire force. Everything except these, I think, jumps into play. Well, after 20 minutes with artillery firing, not that far away, certainly within hearing distance, this guy is doing a lot more than taking a pee. So, I jumped in and looked at uh, uh, the uh, errata, and it turns out he makes it back to his lines. <laughs> uh, apparently, there's also a screw-up where... A lot of the stuff on the chart is wrong. Uh, the OB rosters, basically, if something's somehow correct on the counters, 
it might be mistaken on the order of battle. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not much I can do about that. I'm not sure how much effect there is. There could be an effect to the amount of boxes marked here. I'm not going to worry about brigade effectiveness and trying to fix that. That's one of the issues there. Uh, artillery, if the artillery is wrong, I can see that. But, you know, I, I don't want to go through and, and try to make corrections to this. But there's definitely a set of errata you got to find. And it was kind of cool for me because uh, I went and looked on board. I did a Google search and Board Game Geek threw me on the general errata for Great Battles of American Civil War, which showed some interesting things, which is like, this is a different edition than that was. And there's errata for Wilson's Creek I didn't know about. None of which mattered too much. Actually, I knew some of the errata. I had found it somewhere because I had penned it in on some of the pieces. Anyway, um, I'm not too worried about it. But what was funny is I, I didn't see a Pleasant Hill errata. When I went to Pleasant Hill, actually under Pleasant Hill was the errata for the Great Battles of American Civil War. Uh, general roles, but the next link down outside of some city planning errata for Pleasant Hill, was uh, over on Web Gognards, and that kind of made me happy to just open up a regular little text file instead of these stupid PDFs and stuff that have been loaded up. Anyway, uh, onward with the Confederates' second turn then. Okay, Confederate half of the turn, and kind of shifting further to the right here. Uh, the reason this defensive position of the gully, or gulch, or whatever, is unpleasant, and there's no victory point spot behind it. So what I want to do is avoid a head-on attack there and try to drive into Pleasant Hill itself, where there are victory points back here, and I think here, and maybe under these, I don't know. Looks like richer terrain. And if I can hit the very edge of the gully, well, that's okay, because... It's not actually protected there, kind of like the sunken roads or whatever. It is actually cut through there. So you can kind of attack it safely from certain directions. Over here, moving around to get a flank attack on this. Uh, command over here. This is an independent, or a pair of independent units. I sent B's independent cavalry down this way too. With the rest of the uh, Confederate activated forces, trying to slice down and catch from this side. We'll start a frontal battle over here and maybe put some pressure again on the gully on that side, uh, but I would rather get as many outflanking type positions, try to cut the Union Army apart as much as I can uh, for this situation. There was some battery, some counter battery fire going uh, this way. The uh, Union artillery and Union rifles were allowed to fire back. Uh, into this direction. Actually, they fire first. Uh, we had some firing coming uh, as, as the Confederates advanced. Not to a lot of effect, although one unit was took a loss and a rout. Uh, but that's rallied. We had these guys get pinned, which meant a devastating shot was avoided and also a melee uh, opportunity was avoided. Now I've got to try to figure out which Union units can actually move because, you know, obviously this guy and this guy have received small arms fire, la la la. Uh, I don't know how you can receive small arms fire and not have a line of sight within, oh, three hexes. He could be taking rifle fire, yeah. Okay, so um, a lot of the Union units are active, but it's not absolutely, you know, obvious which one. Like, if I had shot it, one of these, which I think I did, only that one's definitely active and the other ones are only sort of kind of active and it's just kind of a headache there. <laughs> Belay all of that. Uh, it's by brigade, which makes things much, much easier. So, you know, any brigade that's being under attack, for example, these guys is now activated. Okay, that sounds simple, but I'm not quite sure what's up with these other units being out. Maybe this will all make sense to me, but maybe there are things that aren't accounted for that are active. I don't know. Well, we'll see. 
Okay, so let me go into what I think is confusing here. The Union Army was very slow to react to the Confederate, allowing several brigades to be outflanked. Great. The following brigades are treated for all purposes as if they are in reserve. Well, they are already. Wait a minute. Uh, Shaw, Benedict, Dwight, and McMillan. Dwight, Shaw, Benedict, and McMillan. Okay. No problem, they are. <laughs> I've shot at some of them, which should activate them, right? The brigade in reserve can activate under these conditions. Now, special die roll release union during initial command phase for game turns 3, 4, and 5. They can be activated as per number 33, numbers 2, 3, and 4. Oh, okay, 2, yeah. Three, yeah, four. Okay, well, that's pretty much how you activate it. I don't know what I could have done otherwise uh, to prevent them, but these guys are active now. And I'm not sure, you know, I guess you could scout around and, and slip around them completely. Unfortunately, by firing back at them, I've activated them. Oops. I'm not a very good Confederate player. Uh, somebody shooting at me, I shoot back, right? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, wait a minute. Enemy unit? Hold on. No, small arms fire is not one of them? Two, three, wait. Two, three, and four. Small arms? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. So, I don't know. And I, the other ones look like they would activate it as well, like the brigade release table, which is all about this. I don't know what they're intending to try to represent with this, but it just looks like they're going to be activated no matter what, pretty much. All right. Uh, anyway, I'll get on with the Union turn. So I think this is a situation where more subtlety could have been used. You could slip around on the flank, keep the woods behind you. Of course, then you start rolling on this brigade release table and these things might start ending up coming in. It becomes a do you get the outflanks or not. I was a little more direct, uh, therefore uh, playing more poorly, I guess, um, in my movement forward. That's allowed the Union, well, the attack over here on the picket that was stationed out here has allowed Lynch's brigade to pull up and help cover uh, Benedict here. And then Shaw's activation by coming too close to them and firing has allowed them to fall back to the woods and link up with Dwight. And I think that whole outflank is kind of becoming question. Now, I'm probably going to run away from Dwight's side and try to put more force in here against Shaw. When do these suckers come in? I don't know. They come in back here at 5. All right. Uh, but anyway... That's the end of the second turn, I guess. We got some routed Confederates uh, back here. And that's about it. Not a lot of bloodletting going on yet. We'll move forward.